one thing I would say is this, and I, I like that you said that, Wolf. As um as a black person, as a, as a black man, <clears throat> I'm not going to fight racism with racism, and that's think one thing I think we we should all not do. I don't care if a person calls me this, that, and the third. I'm not going to fight you with racism. I'm going to fight you with your hands. But I ain't going to call you no start back because I don't believe in it. I don't believe you're that. I don't believe your colored people are that. I don't believe your race or people is this, 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 this slur. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe in that. I feel like there's good people in the world, no matter what race they are, no matter what color, no matter what gender. And I feel like there's bad people, same way. Uh, or did I say bad? You, you know what I mean? I think there's good people and bad people of our races or whatever, and it doesn't, their skin doesn't define it or anything like that. That's all what I believe. So I'm not going to call you any racial slur. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go back and forth with you or anything like that. I'm just not going to do it. Um, and I think as black people, uh, we, we, we should, you know, follow that trend. And one thing I put it on Twitter that we're too forgiving. And do I think that we should just forget and forgive? No, we should not. But we should not battle racism or racism because it just, to me, ra- being racist is just one of the most unintelligent, stupid things that, and ignorant things that a person can be. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so I'm, I'm going to leave that at that. Um, another thing I want to say is, you know, um, you know, rest in peace to George Floyd. And I'm sorry that, you know, this had to happen. And hopefully, you know, y'all get some, you know, some type of, uh, you know, well-being and some type of peace with this. And I know y'all won't. <laughs> Welcome back to the episode of You Feel Me? It's your boy Duffel. Dwarf. B2 Dre. And uh, Jerry. So today we have a, a, a very hot topic, very interesting episode. We're going to be discussing the whole uh, Derek Chauvin trial and, you know, what happened in, in the trial um, and in the case or whatever. Um, so... First, I want to say uh, that, uh, it, it, you know, I, I guess we got a small win today, um, but uh, personally, I don't feel like it's over. Um, I mean, you know, I'm happy definitely for the like the three guilty charges, and I'll explain more about that later. But, um, you know, like I said, the work ain't done, and, you know, there could still be an appeal. We could still got to win on sentencing. But today was a, a – I, I would say today was definitely a win. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, how things play out and everything like that. But uh, I want to get, uh, you know, based off what y'all know, you know, I want to get y'all opinion on what y'all thoughts are, how y'all feeling about the whole situation. So, uh, Jay, let's start with you. Uh, Jay, you muted. Me, at first, it was hard to watch the trial, you know. Um, that was extremely hard, but, you know, uh, kind of pushed through it, watched bits and pieces of it. Um, some of the uh, different um, prosecutors and defendants talks and their, you know, they're presenting their cases and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think that this is a win. Um, you said it's small. I personally think it's a little bit bigger than that, um, just because of the fact that I feel like net. I feel like now that it might might make me make people more scared to do shit like that. You know what I'm saying? To you know brutalize black people or people of color for anyone you know um like that and take you know use their 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 power uh over them like that so i think it's a big win and uh i'm I'm happy that um he got convicted on all three charges uh i'm, I'm the same with uh jaren i didn't really watch uh the trial i'm very pessimistic so i didn't think that he would be convicted, so I didn't want to watch and, you know, just become mad watching everything happen and go through all those feelings again. But um, <clears throat> like Jaron said, I'm, I'm glad it happened. Uh, I think it's a it's a big win. But like you said, there's all there's always more to do, considering how many cases like this have gone the other way, you know, with uh, police or just uh, brutality in general against uh, black people. But um, I'm glad with the timing of it and everything. But uh, I'll leave it there for now. Um, I think it's really, I think like Keandre said, um, I I hadn't been following it, but we we'd been talking on and off in Discord about it. I think it's uh, I think it's an important win. Um, I do think it's bigger than than what I guess a lot of pessimists would think, just because like, like. I guess a lot of people have the mindset of, damn, it took this much like effort to to get this done. But then it kind of like, 
it gives me a little bit of hope because then you think back to like the civil rights movement and you just imagine like what they kind of went through and it's kind of like the civil rights movement part two almost so i think it's cool that like yeah it sucks that you had to put so much effort in to get something like this done um and you know the fact that a lot of people are pessimistic about it speaks speaks volumes but i think it's great that you know progress was made and hopefully it continues from here I definitely agree. And I um I, I followed it all the way through from start to finish. Um, you know, I watched the the videos and everything like that. And I can't lie, it was very hard to watch. And I don't I don't blame anyone who didn't watch it or who didn't follow it. I really don't. It's it's very taxing on you because, you know, some days like I it just took a toll on my, my me mentally, you know what I'm saying? Cause, you know, that could have been me or somebody I know, or something like that. So it was definitely uh, very hard to watch, you know, just follow through it was. Um, one thing I can say, though, is that uh, I do think progress is being gained. And, you know, some people will say that's not true, but I'm going to put it in a bigger timeline perspective. And by any means, no, it should not. It, no, we're not done. No, it's not the best it can be. No, it's not great, but it's better than it was. For instance, we're not slaves anymore. You know what I'm saying? We're not, no, I'm, I'm not owned by anybody, you know? So that's one thing. The second thing I would say is I know, you know, some older black people, they were afraid to go outside in general, no matter where they were at. And I think, you know, we're past that. You know, I'm, I'm definitely very cautious when I go out and everything like that. But am I afraid to go out? No. So I feel like we are moving forward. But I do agree with what Jaron said is I, this will make other police officers think twice, I hope, before they do some something that could, you know, kill somebody that's unarmed and he's defenseless. defenseless. You know, it. To me, um, you know, I I just don't, you know, understand how some people don't get how big of an issue this is. And, you know, they say it's not a, a race thing, but it definitely is. It definitely is. You know, I've seen a video on perspective of, you know, uh, deaths according to ratio of, you know, black and uh, white, you know, Americans. And there's like, I think it was like eight times as many white Americans than there are black Americans, but three times as many black Americans die to police than white Americans. So you can see like there's an issue there. So let's not look at the numbers as a whole. Let's look at them as a ratio. And then you can really see where the problem lies. Um, another thing I want to, uh, first I want to start off is, you know, it was guilty, guilty, guilty. So I want to say what those, um, what those three, guilty charges were. So first, uh, he was guilty on second degree unintentional murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. Now, um, I didn't know what, what a lot of this meant. I can't lie. So I did look it up just to, to understand, you know, what each one was and why he couldn't be charged with other crimes. So I guess I started with why he couldn't be charged because some people wanted to charge him with first degree murder. Now, first degree murder is premeditated and that means basically he planned on doing it. So in all honesty, I don't feel like when he woke up that day, he decided, yeah, I'm going to go kill uh, a black man or a black man or something like that. I don't think, or anyone, I don't think that was the case. I honestly don't. Um, that, that's the first reason why I don't, I don't feel like first degree murder was a good charge to convict him of. Now, let's start with what he did convict it of. Se uh, the, uh, one thing is uh, second degree unintentional manslaughter. Oh, unintentional murder. So um, second degree murder, there's an intentional part and then there's unintentional. So the unintentional is basically uh, causing death uh, of a human being um, with while committing or attempting to commit a felony offense other than criminal sexual conduct in the first or second degree with force or violence or drive by shooting. Um, and there's more to that, but also there's, uh, you know, if they have a restraining order or something like that against you and you do something, you can be charged. But basically, basically this is like you kill somebody unintentionally, but it could have been prevented. Basically it, it, that's, that's the, you know, the big gist. The, the second thing is third degree murder, which, um, uh, there's, it's only in three States, I believe, or defined is defined like this or three States, Florida, Minnesota. And that's where the, you know, the whole thing happened in Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, and Pennsylvania. Uh, it was formally defined in New Mexico, uh, in Wisconsin, uh, third degree murder may include felony murder, regardless of underlying felony, felony mur murder only where the underlying felony is nonviolent or depraved heart 
depraved heart murder. I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, meaning that intent to kill is not an element of the offense. Oh, okay. So, okay. Third degree murder is any state which defines as punishable by a maximum of 40 years. I was going to get to that. But basically what this one is saying is uh, if you kill somebody um, in a, I guess, not necessarily with intent, but it still happens, you can get charged with third degree murder. So that's that's another thing. So I, 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 I don't really know what's the difference between unintentional second degree and third degree. Like what's the layers behind it? But it seems like both unintentional. But I think second degree manslaughter is more like on the force side. Like you have to show some type of force and it unintentionally kills somebody rather than second, uh, third degree is you could just kill them. It wasn't no force involved, but it was unintentional. And then the second one is second degree manslaughter. And um, this is more like, uh, kind of like, like ne negligence. So basically like you're neglecting the person and or the scenario and you end up causing a death. So this is what, I'm going to read the five bullet points for this one, because uh, this one was the, um, yeah, oh no, actually it wasn't. This is a 10-year charge. So second degree murder manslaughter is 10 years. Third degree murder is a max of 25. Oh, max of 10. And second degree unintentional murder is a max of 40. So the minimum for the 40 years is 10 to 15. The minimum for 25 is 10 to 15. And the minimum for the 10 is three uh, basically three and a half to four and a half, basically. So we're looking at at least if he's actually convicted of all three and sentenced, we're looking at at least 20, 24 ish years in jail, which I don't know. I'll be happy about, you know, that that's a win in my book. I say anything over 20 plus that's a win in my book based on what's happened in the past when it comes to this, where they don't get shit, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, back to the second degree manslaughter, um, a person who causes death of another by any of the following means is guilty of manslaughter in the second degree. Uh, and then one is by the person's culpable negligence, whereby the person creates an unreasonable risk and consciously takes chances of causing death or greatly bodily harm to another. I think this is, that's really all I got to read there. Cause to me, that was the way that they convicted him on because, you know, uh, his negligence of you were on him for nine minutes and I think 42 seconds, 32 seconds, you should have got off. Is that some, so you caused the death by unreasonable risk because it definitely could have been avoided. It, it was definitely unreasonable. So I think that's the one they got him on. Um, then the next one is firearm. Pitfall. Yeah, yeah. So that's the one they uh, got him on because the rest is involving weapons and you know other scenarios. But based on all that, we got a guilty, guilty, guilty verdict. Now my question to y'all is, um, and I want y'all to talk a little bit about a little bit about it. Are y'all surprised by the three guilty verdicts? And uh, we'll start with Wall on this one. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I think all of us are pretty pessimistic when it comes to cases like this where you feel like, you know, whether it's the public or it's just your personal opinion, you feel like, yeah, it's so obvious, you know, like clearly this, uh, this dude is guilty of X, Y, and Z. Um, but then, you know, all of this is so like subjective, right? Like you can argue something a certain way and, you know, they definitely did try and argue that oh, you know, he, you know, he's not guilty because A, B, and C type of thing. So, um, based on, like, history and whatnot, and, like, you know, just how, how cases like these always feel like they end up, um, I was definitely surprised that it was, you, you know, I, I expected at least one guilty, but not, not all three, so I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. Keandre? Uh yeah, I was I was very surprised when I mean when you told us earlier, just because like Wall said they try to flip, you know the judgments in different ways to where, you know this might be the case but it's not um it doesn't fit the bill of the law, uh, exactly, and uh just seeing in the past all the situations that happened where, you know, someone was killed and this cop got off because of this reason or this cop died off because you know there wasn't footage or just even some of the things that doesn't doesn't involve cops where you know a man was killed or a child was killed and you know they said the person was in his rights to defend himself or something like that you know so i, I was super surprised when they actually convicted him on all of those as guilty uh, i think that's a that's a big win it's um it, it shows there is progress being made in the judicial system i would say 
Um, yeah, I was surprised. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, I thought he would get one of the charges, whichever one's the lesser, serve half. So I think the lesser is like, I think 10 years, serve maybe five years, get out. You know, that's what I thought was gonna happen. I, I figured he would get charged with at least one of them, but I did feel like he would only serve half of the minimum, the, the one that was the less, you know, and basically get off. Um, so I definitely feel like this definitely was a surprise for a lot of people just because of the fact that he got convicted of all three. Um, and I think it's uh, an eye opener too. It's like, okay, well, hopefully now, you know, we go get some of these other ones taken care of and solved. Like, you know, I still wish, cause not to go into a different uh, subject, but you know, the Breonna, Breonna Taylor situation. I, I thought about this a lot. Who's at fault there? The police, the people who sent the call in, you know, like who's actually the person who shot the, the guy, like, I mean, the, her, who, who's who's exactly at fault? The commander? Like, you know what I'm saying? There's so many things. So I kind of understood why they why they will make it seem like, okay, well, we can't send no one down. But in this one, it was outright. He done it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, he might have been responding to a call. But, you know, he made the decision to stay, uh, keep his knee on him. He made the decision to not follow protocol. You know what I'm saying? So definitely I feel like this one was just – it would have been too much crazy shit happening in the world if he didn't get a convicted of at least one of them, in my opinion. Um, I definitely agree, and I was surprised of, I, I wasn't as surprised of, three. but on uh, three, yes, I was very surprised. I ain't gonna lie, I started getting happy when they said one, because I, pre- I was pretty sure that they that was the only one. Now, one thing I am confused about, like, the unintentional second-degree manslaughter is a 40-year max, right? I don't, I really don't understand, based on just what I read, and I might have to do more knowledge, how that one is a 40-year max to me. The one where uh, I think is uh, second degree murder to me that should have been a forty because that was like the unintentional risk. Like you're conscious of what's going on, and and you just you know kept doing it, and and it caused the death. Maybe not intentionally you wanted to kill him, but you kept doing what you were doing instead of not changing up how you were doing it, and it caused the death. But but I ain't gonna lie. Yes, I, I was surprised about all three. Um, and you know, like like y'all said, like I, I do think that's some progress. Um, but I want to move on to something else that happened. I, I I want to first, you know, talk about the trial in 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 you know whole. And I know y'all didn't really watch it, but I I want to give y'all a little context of you know what I witnessed. So there was a lot of witness call, a lot of witnesses called. You know, from the people from bystanders to people that came, uh, the, the you know the first responders. Uh, the cops, the the medics, uh, and then they got you know professional experts that wasn't even there. They just looked at the material from doctors to uh, training instructors for the police to um, to 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 uh, it, it was somebody else there as well. I can't remember what it was, but anyways, a lot of lot of witnesses and they kind of organized them by like if you were there, you went this day. If you were professional, you go this day. Uh, you know, oh police chiefs, police chiefs. He, that was there because I would say that's different from just a regular police officer. But anyway, um, yeah, so they kind of organize them like that. And and what I want to say is a lot of those witnesses done a great job. Whoever coached them, like I'm telling y'all, bro, like they did a, an amazing job. I don't know if they were coached or I don't know if, if you know, they were told how things were going to go, if that was really just them on their own. But regardless, like, they did not let the defense bully them. They did not get bullied at all. They did not let the the defense uh, twist their words up and try to, you know, basically uh, out of context, you know, make them say something or anything like that, you know, based on what we've seen. Like, you know, they they did an amazing job. Uh, they were very direct, and they made things very clear that this was definitely avoidable, and he he did not have to kill him, and he did murder him. That was pretty much the gist of, you know, the witnesses. And then, you know, um, the – uh, you know, police chiefs and police officers said that uh, they didn't train this. Uh, this was definitely unavoidable. It did not have to happen like this. And he didn't use excessive force, everything like that. So, you know, shout out to them. Shout out to witnesses, you know, uh, to for that. Because I think that was great. And like one, I really remember uh, one of the medics who was a witness, but she was, she was an EMT. And uh, she wasn't on duty that day, but she showed up and she asked to uh, check on his pulse. And they told her no. Now, at that point, that should have told you if you were a conscious human being, hey, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I got him down. He's not breathing. Let me see what's going on. You know, whatever. Let let, let me see all that. Because, and that's why I say, you know, 
like, I don't understand how, you know, people are dumbfounded by this. To me, he didn't show no remorse. He didn't try to check on them. None of that. And they did, one, one thing that they did do, they did call an EMT after, I think it was about three, four minutes. And the EMT was late. But even with that, if you have people on hand telling you to get up or whatever, then just get up. You know what I'm saying? Like, he wasn't resisting. You didn't have to stay on him. All that bullshit they were saying about he's big and this, that, and the third. Like, he looked af way more afraid of them than y'all were of him throughout the whole entire video. He was afraid. And he was saying he was afraid. He was saying that he was going to die. He was saying that he couldn't breathe. He was saying all of these things. So, for them not to understand it and get help. And one, one thing I want to say, some people are saying that the other cops, it shouldn't be as bad on them. And this is what I say. If you a cop and you afraid to step to another cop for doing something wrong, you just as liable. You're just as liable. So whatever he done, y'all did not tell him to stop. Y'all did not move him. Y'all didn't do none of that. So y'all deserve whatever he gets because y'all are accomplices to it. Y'all are. So since he got convicted in whatever, and like I said, I hope the sentencing goes well, and I hope there's no appeal. If there's an appeal, I hope it gets denied. Y'all are just as, as viable because y'all didn't do anything to stop it. Nothing. Y'all didn't do anything to try to stop him from doing that. So, you know, um, that, that's one thing I wanted to say. Another thing I wanted to say is the defense. Now, I can't lie. Some of the stuff that the defense tried to pull was slick, and it was kind of smooth. They, he, he tried his best. It, it was stacked against him. He tried his best. And I don't know how you can defend him. I don't I, I don't know if, if that's a, a hired lawyer or what. But to me, that's some sleazy-ass shit. But he tried. He did try. So some things that they tried to do was – they tried to <clears throat> show different images in horrible angles of Chauvin on Floyd. Now, these angles show, it didn't show that he was on his neck. So they tried to say that he was in correct technique because you can use your knee to put in the shoulder blade of a back, according to Minnesota law. You can do that, but you can't put it on their neck to cut off their airflow. So they tried to show that. Another thing they tried to show say is that he died of natural causes because he had a heart condition. And that was disproven by multiple uh, medical professionals. So that was thrown out the window. They also tried to say that the crowd riled him up to where he couldn't do his job. Then the prosecution showed that picture of him smirking. Now, does that look like somebody that's not controlling the situation? You know what I'm saying? Is that No, it doesn't. You know, that shows somebody that's, um, oh, yeah, I'm going to stay on him. Like, fuck y'all. That's how I feel. That's how I feel that, that he was looking. So that's one thing they tried. And the prosecution done an amazing job. Um, and they done it pro bono, apparently. So, you know, shout out to them. Um, I feel like that's that's very nice of them and very kind. And their name should go down in history, um, regardless of an appeal, regardless of sentencing, because they tried their best. They did their job. Uh, you know, I really felt like they tried their hardest and they came with correct information, anything like that. Now, let's talk about some of the crap, some of the bull that went on during the trial. So apparently a doctor that the defense got is a witness. He said that George Floyd died of, he was the only one to say this, that George Floyd died of a drug overdose. Um, that's one thing the defense tried to say. And they disproved that because they said he didn't have enough uh, fentanyl in his system uh, for it to be charged with a DUI or something like that. So that was disproven. And they said that, uh, you know, basically like he died of lack of oxygen. But anyways, this doctor said that he died of a drug overdose. And apparently this guy has a charge against him for, I think it's sexual misconduct or something like that. And um, so the, the the story behind that is that to get time off of his conviction, the defense brought him up to basically try to help out their side. Some, some shit like that. So that's some of the mess that happened in the trial. Another thing is... The Maxine Waters thing. Now, so let me put this in perspective for y'all. So the jurors are told, we're told, you cannot watch the news. Whatever you do, you do not watch the news. So your opinion can be influenced by that, right? So Maxine Waters said, and um, this is paraphrasing, but she basically said that we want justice, we deserve justice. And if we don't get the justice in the verdict that we want, we need to get confrontational. That's what she said. That's That was her statement. She never said anything about we're going to get confrontational with the jurors. None of that. She never said none of that. And, you know, people were saying that there could be a hung jury based off of that. And I thought it was one of the jurors, but no, it was the judge. The judge said that he wished politicians would wait until after the verdict for them to speak up. But he also said that, that, said that there is a, that it was written down as instructions, do not watch the news. And a lot of people are saying, I do agree. 
she's not the first politician to talk about it during the you know the trial. Um, it was others, but he made sure that she was mentioned. Mentioned, and I felt like there's some bullshit behind that because she wasn't the only one. If you gonna mention her, mention everybody else, and he mentioned her. So, but in the instruction that says don't watch the news. So none of the jurors, I guess, admitted to watching the news. I don't know. But they, they tried to get the defense tried to get a mistrial because they were saying there's a hung jury because basically she persuaded them, yada, yada, yada. But if you were told not to watch the news, you wouldn't have seen it. It's that simple. So, um, but he did say that they could appeal off of that. Now, do I agree with that? Hell no. I don't I don't understand how she's any different from any other American citizen. And I, I understand it. I get she's a politician. I get that her voice holds weight. But she's also an American citizen and can have freedom of speech, just like anybody else that spoke out. She didn't threaten anyone. She never said, let's beat up the jury, let's kill them, none of that. So I don't think that an appeal would go well unless it goes to that judge because he did say that that's something they could appeal on. So that's that's another, some of the other, you know, mess that went on during the trial. Now, um, one thing I want to ask y'all is, what are y'all thoughts on politicians and people of power speaking on this trial while it's going on and uh we'll start with uh keandre uh for that i just want to start with saying uh like you like you said the witnesses the prosecution everyone did their jobs there was no games um i, I think they handled it greatly but uh as for your question politician I, I agree with the judge i feel like as a politician as a person who's supposed to know the law understand you know the situations and you know, uh, the rules and regulations that go with things, you should wait until um, a situation is decided before speaking on it, especially if it's in the court of law. But um, as far as the hung jury thing, uh, I think that was just like a setup. Like you said, like they're looking for any way to get out the situation. The, the defense was doing anything they could to, you know, find their way out of this um, decision. You know, and they were, like you said, the doctor, you know, the different pictures of George Floyd and, you know, the dude kneeling on him, all that. It just seemed like a slimy situation to use to get out of it. Jerry? Uh, I definitely agree with what Kendra said. Um, I feel like that, like, first of all, Kendra said everybody did a great job. Um, I just want to talk about first before I get into the question was the, the guy who uh, they tried to make look like an angry black man and his composure. Um, I thought that was amazing. You know, I, I feel like I, I, I would have handled that a little differently. You know, I feel like I would have fell for the trap just because it, I would have been so mad at him trying to basically make me seem like that. But, you know, he, he handled that so well, um, extremely well. Um, but as far as the... Um, What'd you say the uh, politicians and people of power? Po yeah, that the way that's what you worded it. Politicians and people of power. No, I I think I, personally I think that no they shouldn't you know speak on it. You know I think that a lot of politicians shouldn't even have a say in any type of. I, I feel like a lot of politicians shouldn't have a platform to speak on that that type of stuff during the trial, whether it's good or bad to the trial. Just because I feel like a lot of people under them, well, I mean, I guess it's not really they fault, but a lot of people under them don't do the research. They just look at what they say and take it for face value, you know. And you know, as we see with the, with the Trump shit, like you know, that goes a long fucking way. So, yeah, I feel like it's a double edged sword with that. But do I feel like they shouldn't be able to say something? No. But do I feel like it should be flagged, you know, as this could not be true or this is like you know an opinion? Then, you know. I like that a little better, like the way Twitter started doing it and stuff like that. I agree. Uh, well, I think it's tough. I Part of me at first was like, yeah, you should be able to speak on it just because, like, you know, you have your own opinion. Well, it's not going to, it's probably not going to change whether or not, you know, the, the case goes your way or not. But then just sitting back and kind of thinking about it and, like, understanding, like, like, when, if you say something and your fans see it, then bam, like you can cause a lot of controversy, um, regardless if your opinion changes or not. Um, so holding that off, holding off, you know, implicit bias until after the fact, I think it's important. So yeah, I definitely agree that you, you probably should hold your tongue, um, just for the sake of like, 
let's let's make this as fair as possible um let's let's try and take as much bias out as possible um so after thinking about it, yeah i definitely agree with you guys that that that's something you kind of kind of have to stick uh stay out of yeah see i was on the fence just like y'all about it like i was thinking about it and you know i'm really on both sides i feel like you should be able to speak up if you want to you know what i'm saying there is freedom of speech you should be able to say what you want but i would say that's in a perfect world and in this world they'll do anything to try to let the cops win and uh you know the the, the wrong side of my opinion win you know we've seen it in the past you know they they bring up bullshit to try to you know throw out you know charges and let people walk out that day with non-guilty verdict so knowing that and especially with it coming from a black individual like i said she wasn't the only one um to say anything i feel like she not hold your tongue but wait just wait because they try to do anything they can to make some bullshit up for you know there to be a non-guilty verdict and we know that so that's what i would say i would say in a perfect world you should be able to say what you want to say and they should follow instructions the jury not to watch the news but it's hard it's on your phone it's everywhere you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so it, i can't lie it's, it's hard um i think so, the main thing is they they need to understand their platform because like yes this was somebody who was on the right side of it you know saying that you know justice needs to be served and whatnot at the same time you know that's something that trump did a lot where you know he would get on top of his platform say some bullshit and then you know people riled up which like i said earlier i'm, I'm glad it happened now just because i think if it happened during the trump administration we would have seen a lot more of that and it wouldn't, it would have been looked at totally opposite of this. It would have been, you know, cheered for and like followed and, you know, it could have been riots and whatnot that happened because of that. So just oh. know your platform. No, I definitely agree. And I, and I think that's a great way to say it, say it. Cause it, 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 like it is, it's, it's, you know, the same thing that Trump would have done, you know, overstepped and talked when nothing should have been said instead of just waiting. So I definitely agree. Um, but yeah, I felt like she should have waited. Um, cause you know, at that time it wasn't necessary. You no, know, there wasn't anything to look down on. Like if you watch the trial, you can see that in a normal person's mind, if you have no bias, no racism, the prosecution done a great job and they won and they proved what they needed to prove if you watched it. So I felt like she watched every step of the way cause her being a politician, her, her, her being a black individual that has spoke up about, you know, black lives matter and everything like that. So, uh, I feel like she should have waited a little bit, but do I think it's wrong? Nah, it happened. Oh, well, you know what I'm saying? If the jury followed the instructions and didn't whatever the news, then Hey, it, it is what it is. Um, but you know that, that that's my opinion on that uh and you know one thing i will say is about the whole trump trump thing is the trump is still out so i would say for uh, my black and brown people my minorities you know what i'm saying stay safe watch your back because you never know what's gonna happen you know what i'm saying because we were talking earlier and i told them yesterday that they said that they were letting out uh minneapolis schools uh from today till friday and i was saying that that doesn't look good but then I sat here and thought about it last night, and I was like, it might be for the best, cause no racial bias. But let's be real, who, what race, and what type of person is the most likely to shoot up a school? And I ain't gonna, I'm gonna just leave it at that. So, you know, and who, who is most of Trump followers? And just leave it at that. I don't gotta say that. Y'all already know what I'm talking about. So, uh, you know, I feel like that's kind of why they done it, cause, um, you know, you know, so, uh. But moving on from that, you know, like I said, um, I think this was definitely a great day, a great day, a day that should be going down in history, a day that should be taught to kids. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said but once before, you know, we learned about how bad the Holocaust is, how horrible it was. But they try to whitewash, you know, slavery and, and civil rights movement and everything and how racial uh you know, racial biases and segregation and all that is really is and really was. And is in is because for the same reason we know who done it and that's why they do it why they try to whitewash it so i'm just leave it at that but you know we should learn these things so history doesn't repeat itself because you know uh we see that it's, it's still you know bad things are still happening like a lot of rodney the whole rodney king thing was mentioned in this and i don't know if y'all know what that what that situation was but basically uh rodney king was a black man and he got beat unnecessarily brutality you know all of that for no reason on live television the world saw it um so you know 
it's kind of the same thing with this. We saw an unarmed black man get treated horribly and and came and died because of police brutality. So history repeated itself in that situation. Maybe not as horrible, but it still happened. So you know, uh, and one thing I did say see is Rodney King's family was with George Floyd's family. And one thing I want to say is. You know, some of the juror, uh, not jurors, uh, witnesses that we mentioned, sorry, I don't know their names and we don't know their names, but they know who they are. They've done a great job, but uh, we, I, I just didn't look up the names. But anyways, moving on, I saw Rodney King's family with George Floyd's family, and uh, I saw somebody say that, you know, history shows that black people bond over trauma generationally, because that happened, you know, a while back, and now uh, this is happening, and they're bonding over the trauma, and that's true, you know, it, it's very true, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, if you don't see what's wrong with you know, a situation, I think you should look in, into uh, inside yourself and ask yourself what's really going on. Now, now, me personally, I don't have nothing against cops. I don't have nothing get, against the police. But I have been racially profiled, and I have been in a situation where me and my brother, something horrible could have happened to us because some cops came up and up there, and the first thing they started doing was lying. And you know, I've been in a situation like that. You know, so I will say that if you're a police officer, do better. Just do better. You know what I'm saying? I, I know being a cop or a police officer is a tough job and you, you know, put your life on the line or whatever. But if if it's not fit for you, just quit and find something else to do because don't put yourself in a situation like he did. You know what I'm saying? Don't put yourself in a situation. If you racially biased, you don't need to be a cop anyway. And then one thing I always ask is, you know, we see who who was racist in the past, racist comments, racist everything. And these people are still alive today. You know, their 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 family was slave owners and everything like that. But we still have them in power and we try to say that they have no racial bias or, you know, they're you know, they don't have any 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 hints of white supremacy left. Bullshit. They do. It's still fucking there. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I don't know if it's gonna change because like I told y'all before, when I was in high school, you know, I didn't deal with racism from my peers. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the white kids, they tried to be black. And I don't give a fuck what y'all say. A lot of y'all motherfuckers did try to be black, try to hang around with the black people. Um, and, you know, I mentioned this on Facebook before. If you got beef or whatever, you know where to fucking find me. My DMs are fucking open. I'm about whatever. So anyways, back to what I was saying. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of these people we went to school with, they didn't show no racism. But now that we older, the racism is there. That, you know, that redneck is there. That... That, that, that bias is there, that racism is there, you know? And I was talking to one of my homeboys and they were saying how they were talking about Trump. And if you bring up racism, they don't want to say yay or nay to that. They just want to talk about something else, you know? Like, no, y'all know he racist. And if y'all not, if y'all want to stand up for him and his racism, you just as racist as him. And I'll down that hill any day. So, you know, I, I don't know if this will ever change because I, I honestly thought back then that it would. But as we see that when people grow up, they inherit what their parents thought. So, I don't know. I mean, what y'all think? Y'all think, I mean, I know there's progress. Do y'all think in y'all honest heart that this whole racial bias from white Americans can go away? Anybody can speak up. Uh, I'll start. Uh, well, before that, just with the, what you're saying about the whitewashing of the history and how it's difficult for us to find out these things, I think that's just due to who, you know, the winners write history. You know, that's the saying that goes back for a long time. And it's very true. Like, you know, with the Holocaust, we, we know who did it. We know they lost that war and we know who wrote about it, you know. So they lost and it's looked upon as a terrible thing. But, you know, as it is with America, you know, slavery was a big part of the economy, was a big part of starting the country, you know, slavery can still be seen as going on with like um, the for-profit prison system, you know, having prisoners work um, on land and whatnot with, you know, the prison system mostly going after black people. But as far as racial bias, I think it can change, but I think it's not, it's not going to change by them like the people with the racial bias, racial bias, it has to be by us, you know, those who don't have that bias, those who are, I guess, I don't want to say more educated because that's not the right way to put it, but I guess less ignorant because for the way I see it, to stop something from happening, you have to be very inclusive. You have to get these people around you. You have to bring them outside of their inner circle, which 
I think that's a problem with our hometown. Like you said, like, you know, it's a very small, tight knit circle to where if you're there, you're just in, involved in it, you know, surrounded by it. It's hard to get away. You know, the longer you're there, the more you might pick up these behaviors that is, you know, uh, it just goes round and round, you know. So to change that, we have to step out of our comfort zone, talk to them, you know, pull them out of that, have them understand where we come from and try to explain that. And that's not always going to work. Like you said, you know, sometimes your DMs have to be open and you got to catch a fade. But, you know, as long as it's for the right reason, I'm with it. Big facts, big facts. Uh, Walter? I think, I think it'll never fully go away. Like, I remember in school, one of my professors said, um, and he, he would never give anyone 100 because no one's ever perfect. I, I think in the same way, like, it'll never go away. Things won't ever be perfect. Um, but I think we're trending upwards. I think I think we're getting to a place where, and it's funny, I was watching a basketball video, um, and this, uh, this white dude was playing basketball, and uh, he was surrounded by a bunch of, uh, you know, minorities, and they were talking trash to him and like calling him, you know, slurs and like, um, he, he was like, he said, like, he said, don't call me that. Like, this is a new, this is a new culture. This is a new era. This is a new, uh, life. You, you can't say stuff like that anymore. Like, like him being able to like step up and say that, like without feeling like feminine, feminine or uh weak i i think that's that's cool and that's a sign like we're getting to a spot where we can like we don't have to just go straight to fighting off of that we can like vocalize you know the way we feel you know and he he said it not in the nicest way but he said it you know he, he was real with it he wasn't you know barking back with racial slurs or anything negative in that manner um so I definitely think we're trending in the right direction and, and we're going to get to a good place uh, within our lifetime. So that's that's really exciting for me. I think it's really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> See, I I guess, I don't know. I think, yes, that, I, I, don't, I, know, I don't think it'll ever go away. Um, I think it'll get, they'll hide it better. I, I think it'll get more hate. Not, do, do I think some of it will die off? And by die off, I mean the racist motherfuckers dying? Yes. I think some of it will die off. Um, I don't think it completely will ever go away, but I think that people will be more scared to do it. You know, with all the cancel culture going around, the goat cancel culture going around, where you know you say, you know, some shit like that, and you know what I'm saying in two seconds, Twitter and found your your mama name, your daddy name, where you work at, and all that shit, getting you fired, getting kicked out of school. I like that. I need more of that. You take that into my veins. I like that because they should they stay that you, you it should be consequences, like you know. It should be more consequence of these motherfuckers talking, you know, crazy, you know, saying all these slurs or, you know, being racist and all that kind of shit. It should be consequences to it. And the fact that some, some people are getting these consequences and, you know, like we see today with the trial, consequences to me is what's going to make that shit, you know, a lot better. And more consequences, the better our country will be, you know, in my opinion. And I feel like if if you're not for equality, you're racist or you're Nah, you racist. You know, you racist. Even even anyone, you know, if you're not for equality, if you're not for, you know, everyone being looked at the same, everyone having the same consequences, everyone having the same, you know, uh, opportunities, to me you're racist because and everybody talks about a perfect world. If you ain't an evil motherfucker, you should want a perfect world in my opinion. And I feel like if if you want that, then you strive for that, and you strive for equality. You know what I'm saying? So, that's to me, that's how I feel about it. I definitely agree. And one thing I will say is this, and I, I like that you said that. Well, as um as a black person, as a, as a black man, <clears throat> I'm not going to fight racism with racism. And that's think one thing I think we we should all not do. I don't care if a person calls me this, that, and the third. I'm not going to fight you with racism. I'm going to fight you with your hands. But I ain't going to call you no start back because I don't believe in it. I don't believe you're that. I don't believe your colored people are that. I don't believe your race or people is this, 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 this slur. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe in that. I feel like there's good people in the world, no matter what race they are, no matter what color, no matter what gender. And I feel like there's bad people, same way. 
uh, or did I say bad? You, you know what I mean? I do this. Good people and bad people of our races or whatever, and it doesn't. Their skin doesn't define it or anything like that. That's how what I believe. So I'm not gonna call you any racial slur. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go back and forth with you or anything like that. I'm just not gonna do it. Um, and I think as black people, uh, we 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 should you know follow that trend. And one thing I put it on Twitter that we're too forgiving. And do I think that we should just forgive and forgive? No, we should not. But we should not battle racism with racism because it just to me. Ra- being racist is just one of the most unintelligent, stupid things that, and ignorant things that a person can be. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so I'm, I'm going to leave that at that. Um, another thing I want to say is, you know, um, you know, rest in peace to George Floyd. And I'm sorry that, you know, this had to happen. And hopefully, you know, y'all get some, you know, some type of, uh, you know, well-being and some type of peace with this. And I know y'all won't because no, no amount of money, no amount of justice can bring him back to y'all. So, you know, rest in peace to y'all. I mean, a recipe to him and uh, hope hope y'all, you know what I'm saying, get some some inner peace with this. And um, I mean, this this has helped. Uh, I feel like going forward, you know, people understand what's really going on. So, you know, I hate it had to be from this, but, you know, thank y'all. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, the, the sentencing goes well and there's no appeal or anything like that. Um, but, but to close, um, I just want to say uh, that, um, I feel like being a you know a black person and kind of what Keandre said. I think we gotta level up. And is it right? No. But if we want to, if we want change, we gotta be the change. In a perfect world, we wouldn't need to be. With a perfect world, you wouldn't be able to have to do nothing. You could want to act any different. But we don't live in a perfect world. And then I feel like if we want, you know, we want to be the winners to write the history. So let's become the winners to write the history. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's not, you know you know, be the opposite of that. And another thing, and with that being said, I don't think that there should be any riots or anything in George Floyd's name, you know, at this point. At this point, there should be no riots or, or um, you know, uh, violent protests or anything like that in George Floyd's, George Floyd's name. Now, if you want to do it in some of other people's name, I agree with that, but make sure that's known because I don't want people to think that, oh, just look at them. They got just now look what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because that's exactly what they're going to do. They're looking for any reason to discount what just happened today and what's going to and, and, and what's what's going to you know help us move forward. So that's the one thing I want to say to close. But uh, does anybody else have anything? Uh, I heard something if no one else. But uh, I would say um, for the minorities out there, for black people in general out there, you know, I feel like we are in as like a second type of a uh, black renaissance, you know, black culture is everywhere now. It's one of the black culture's most popular fucking music, you know, leading social cues, you know, everyone wants to act black, everyone wants to be around black people. Um, So, you know, there's that, something to look forward to in that. Another thing I would say, if, you know, like we're talking about with history and whatnot, you know, there's different ways to make sure people are educated on about that, about this. There's different positions you can take, you know, there's more than just being like a politician. You know, you can get on your educational, your local educational board, you know, try to put in some, certain things into the curriculum, you know, talking about, uh, like we said, with slavery, making sure the right things are getting out there or, you know, or whatever it is, you know, whatever your culture is, you know, get on your board and, you know, have that added to your curriculum if you can, you know, be active in your community, figure out your local policies, your your marriage policies, you know, all, all of that shit, you know. Try to figure out as much as you can and help out in your community first because that's where it's going to make the biggest change. And that's all yep. I got. And uh, uh, I appreciate you for saying that because I, I definitely agree with everything you just said. And one thing to close is vote. And I'm not saying vote Republican. I'm not saying vote Democrat. I'm saying vote these racist motherfuckers out, whatever party they in. And one thing I will say, I'm not a Democrat or I'm not a Republican. So I, I see that Joe Biden on bullshit. If he can see that bullshit, going to get his ass out in four years. Greg Abbott, he got to get his ass out of there. All these motherfuckers got to go. So y'all make sure y'all vote. And I know y'all don't, a lot of people don't like politics, and but this is more than politics. Trump was more than politics. This was life or death because these cops and these these Trumpies were getting out of hand. So, you know, that's one thing I want to say. But um, I don't think anybody has anything else. This has been You Feel Me. Thank y'all for watching.